And I got to ask this. Flair and Anderson are like peanut butter and jelly, or in our case, maybe your case, chocolate and almonds. Was there ever any discussion about having you guys reunite with the horseman tees, or was this a day one decision everyone was on board with? Was it like, hey, it's automatic, Flair's back, we're going right back to the horseman? Yeah, and I don't remember whose idea it was, but it, you know, with the with the proper two guys, you know, it it could have flamed up again. Who knows? It was just yeah. to this day, you know, I'm walking through anywhere. And people are wooing me. I don't know why they're wooing me, but it's just that close. <laughs> I love yeah. it. I look at my, I look at Aaron or I look at Brock. I go, why are they wooing? I mean, that's that's Flair's gimmick. But it's just they look at us being so that's closely, right. closely together over the years, and that's what they're wooing. Yeah, I mean, it is. It, 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 the, the analogy of peanut butter and jelly, for better, for worse, whatever that means, you guys were tied together at the hip when it comes to, to success. So, yeah, they're going to woo you, and uh, and especially the four fingers. And Ole, remember, he's the booker, okay? And he and F Flair didn't always see eye to eye, and you know, but so I'm not sure if, you know, it's hard to argue because, you know, listen, Ole didn't make a ton of money with the horseman faction. I mean, he was in it for a hot, you know, few months or whatever until he decided to go on his way. But, uh, yeah, good stuff, man. Always love to see you two together on screen. But, you know, he had made a several fortunes prior to that, back when he was part owner and all that. Oli had already made a huge fortune. And when you got eight kids, you better. But he made a lot of money when he was the booker for Jim Barnett and all that. You know, I don't know mm -hmm. that he made a lot even as the booker at this particular time. Matter sure. of fact, he, you know, there was a conversation we had about that. and uh, it, With him uh, not so, being excited as far as what he was getting paid as the booker? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, here, and here's, here's a story. And uh, Ole never, if, you know, he never said, I'm sorry, I was wrong, nothing to that. He was never wrong. He was never sorry about anything. And, when he took over the book, and I was stuck with this cut my money in half two-year contract with Watts, okay? This is during this period. We signed that contract before we before we did the angle that when my four months were up with my full contract, I would go to half pay for two years. So I went in and I talked to Ole. I said, you know, Watts killed a bunch of us. You know, Rock, I said, you know, you his deal was to just to come in and, and not set the company on fire, but to whatever money he could save them, that's what he got paid off of. So he started cutting everybody's money. And I said, you know, and I, I told him what, what they cut mine to. I said, you know, they cut me in half, and, you know, it's just not right. I've got my lifestyle up to a certain point and worked my ass off to get in a position to earn that money, and now it's, you know, he says, well, Jesus Christ, Arn, you make more than I do. What can I do about it? Years later, uh, it might have even been when we did the first reunion of the Horseman, Greg Price's show up in the same location that I was just in, University Hilton in Charlotte. And for some reason, he said, you know, I remember something about a conversation you and I had one time when I was, you know, maybe in a position to help you, and I didn't, and that's one of the things that I regret. And you never, I never expected him to say something like that because he did not fix my money at that time. And his, his response to it really was, you're American more than I am. Well, I'm also out here wrestling 200 plus days on the road too. What I wanted to say, you know, sure. um, but I didn't, and we let it go. And that's just one of those things. Very rarely do you see the naked underbelly of Oni, Ole Anderson. And just for that brief moment, I felt like he was sincere. I could have helped you, and I didn't. And I feel that's one of the things I regret. Whew. That's powerful coming from a guy like you said, Arn. That would never. That would never. That was never the type to go back or say anything like that. If I, if somebody was betting me a trillion dollars, Oli said that, I'd say you got your mind. Yeah. Huh. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, gives us a lot of, of context and perspective. And again, this is the insight that I think uh, your fans and uh, supporters enjoy hearing on the show. So, um, 
So it is what it is, Arn. You're making half the money of what you made as we watch this, basically. Yeah, and uh, for two years. Okay, 93 to 95. Uh, yep. Yeah, my goodness. So, so Who finally got it fixed for you, Eric? Eric, Eric Bischoff. Yeah, wow. He sure did.